So we've been looking at the sine graph. We've been looking at the sine graph. We paused here. So can you go to page 365, example 8? This time we're going to reproduce this in radian mode. We're going to reproduce this in radian mode. So just as a review, Rich, thank you. Uh, can you put your calculators into radian mode? How did you do that? Guys, we're starting. Thank you. You're going to have to go shift setup. Now, by the way, uh, radians is used more than degrees in upper level math. If you ever reset your calculator, because it does have a reset button, um, it's going to go to radians by default. Physics kids, that might be important. You might be wondering why you're getting a bunch of weird answers in physics. First thing you check is to make sure you're in degrees. Anyways, here in math, we're in radians. You're all in radians. And uh, let's go uh, menu to the graph. And we're going to graph y equals sine x. And we're going to use the view window that they gave us in this lovely grid. So if I look at the view window that they gave me, what's the minimum x value that appears? And you can type negative 2. And remember, we said last day your pi button is second function exp. Now, as soon as you hit enter, it's going to convert it to a decimal. OK? You guys are doing this, yes? Get your calculator out. You're typing this in. You're changing the view window with no hands touching. OK. Uh, three pi. Scale. Uh, let's go by pies. Y min, negative 1.2. 1 square past negative 1, and it was 5 squares. We said that each one was worth 0.2. Y max, positive 1.2. Scale, how about uh, go up by 0.2, since that seems to be what it does there. And there is our sine graph. There is our sine graph. OK. It says sketch. I'm going to show you an easy way to sketch this without actually having to like count like crazy. OK? Here's what I memorize about the sine graph. Now, if anybody not get that, now is your chance to ask. I should have said that. Pam, you got that OK? Taylor, you got that OK? All right. Pause for a second. Here's what's worth memorizing about the sine graph. First thing is this. What does it go through right there? That's a fairly easy point to remember. OK? Yeah, the origin. This is what I remember about the sine graph. I remember about the, don't write this down, just watch. We're going to do this formally later. I remember about the sine graph. If I'm sketching it, I know that it goes through 0, 0. The other thing that I know about the sine graph, the other thing that I know about the sine graph is that it's shaped like this. How can I remember that the sine graph is shaped like that? If I was a good teacher, I'd have a clever way for you to remember that the sine graph is shaped like that shape. That would be nice if there was some way that that shape that I drew in red was somewhat similar to something that had something to do with sine. So conveniently, the sine graph looks a lot like an S. Now it's, OK, fine, a backwards S. It's not perfect, OK? Julia, really? OK. I was thinking more of a snake. Yeah, it's an S. I was going to say snake. I was thinking more okay. like a snake. The whole Shut up. Thing. Here we go. <laughs> Next thing that I know, OK? Next thing that I know. How far to go once around the circle? How many degrees? 360. How far to go once around the circle? How many radians? 2 pi. How far to go once around the circle? How many degrees? 360. How far to go once around the circle? How many radians? Turns out one sine wave is exactly, or 
Now, why is that so nice? If I know those two things, hey, what's halfway have to be? I know that point now. Or pi. What's half of that have to be? 90 degrees, right there. Or pi by 2, that's when I'm at the top. What about uh, when am I at the bottom? I'm pretty sure it's exactly halfway between 180 and 360. Help me out. 270 as degrees. Or, look up, look up, look up, look up. 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2s, 3 pi by 2s. I remember its length, where it starts, and its shape. And I, I can divide all that because it's halves and then halves of halves, which, Brianna, isn't too difficult math for me to do with, deal with. That's what I remember about the sine graph. Oh, I know one more thing. How high does sine get? One. How low does sine get? I would argue that you can't ask for a nicer range than that to remember. Okay, maybe zero, but if it has a range of zero, it has no height. What's the next nicest number to do arithmetic with after zeros? Ones and negative ones. So I'm going to leave that sketch there. You can write, you're gonna, we're going to do it in more detail later on. But B says, sketch a graph of sine x on the grid below. We're going to do this without our graphing calculators. And we're going to do this by saying, hey, I know that point. Put a dot there. How long is one wave? How long is one sine wave? How long is the period? How long is the graph? Those are all the same question. How far is once around the circle? Uh, this is in uh, radians. We're going to get back to where we started from right there. That's where the graph starts to repeat. Okay. I'm also going to be in the middle in the middle. I couldn't ask for a better way to remember that. Then, halfway between 0 and pi, how many squares? Count for me between 0 and pi. Six. Six squares. So how many squares in, Darian? Three squares in is when I'm at the top. One high. Halfway. Oh, and uh, halfway between pi and 2 pi, three squares in from pi, that's when I'm at the do you recall me last day, Brianna, saying it goes uh, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle? It goes middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. I, by doing that, I'm going to argue I can fill in the rest by following the pattern. So you ready? Let's see. It went, it went middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, three squares over. Where am I going to be? Top. One, two, three, top. Three squares over, where am I going to be? Middle. Let's go backwards in the other direction. Three squares backwards, where am I going to be? Well, you know what? Let's connect what we got. Maybe that'll help. If I go... If I, go, if I go three squares backwards, where do you think I'm going to be? Top, middle, or bottom? Bottom. And if I go three more squares backwards, where do you think I'm going to be? Three squares backwards, where am I going to be now? Top, middle. It's really quite a lovely graph because A, I remember when I showed it to you last class, all of you, ooh, kind of cool. It looks cool, but it's wonderfully symmetrical, Mackenzie. And not only is it wonderful symmetrical, but the way it's symmetrical is sure nice numbers. You mean between 1 and negative 1 touching? I can deal with that. Goes through 0, 0? I can deal with that. It's the same length as what I just had to memorize about the stupid circle and radians anyhow? I can live with that. Oh, and then I just keep carving it in half? Okay. It's about as clean as you could ask for for a symmetrical graph. This is how I draw sine all the time. 
So we've sketched it. Because by the way, like I know that's the shape, but to actually get the points in the correct place is a bit tricky from, he from here. But I showed you an easy way. As long as you get that one and that one, then you just start cutting in half. And it's middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom. We should do one more thing. Arrow and uh, arrow to show that it continues with this pattern forever. Okay. Says state the following for the function y equals sine x expressed in radians. What's the domain? Well, I said forever. By the way, if I go back a page, that was the domain that we said for degrees as well. What's the range? How low does this graph go? Negative one. How high does this graph go? Touches? Okay, how do we write that? We said, first of all, for range, because it's in between, we put the lower number there and the upper number, the bigger number there. And it's range, so the y goes in the middle. And then to show it was in between, we wanted to show that it was below positive 1, whilst at the same time being above negative 1. Oh, but is it touching? Is, can it touch? or equal to, or equal to. That's how you can write in between negative one and positive one. That's almost the shortest way you can write it. There is one more way that's shorter called interval notation, which is great, but terribly confusing. X-intercepts, come back to that. Y-intercept. I'm going to scroll back to degrees. You guys stay on your page right now. Have we written anything different than we wrote in the degrees section? No. So Julia, whether it's radians or degrees, those answers are the same. The only thing that's going to change is the x-intercepts. We said that the x-intercepts in degrees occurred every 180 degrees. Hey, 180 degrees, how many radians is that? Oh, look, 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 look. The x-intercepts occur every multiple of pi. At 1 pi, well, first of all, at 0 pi, which is 0. 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, negative 1 pi, negative 2 pi. So how can we write that? I don't want to write out they occur every multiple of pi. I say this. Start with pi, and if you multiply it by a number, call it n, as long as n is an integer, so I'm using n, e, but instead of r for reals, I'm using all integers. Remember, integers, Rachel, are positive and negative, no decimals. That'll generate every x-intercept in infinity. So really, Darian, all you really have to keep straight between radians and degrees is this. And what I've tried to show you is actually you can kind of derive it from this if you know something that I already told you to memorize, which is that 180 degrees is how many radians? Pi. Not one radian. One radian is about this big. That's not 180 degrees. Pi radians. Okay. I assigned some questions for homework. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to do number six together, first of all. Cosine. Cosine. OK. Do they want us to do this in degrees or in radians? And how do I know? OK, so can you put your calculators, uh, shift, set, uh, put it to degrees, please? Oops, I'm in the, I got to go to this menu first. Shift, set up, degrees. and then go back to the graph menu. Pam, your degrees now? When I see two kids, come on, be with me. Taylor, your degrees now? Yeah. OK. Oh, and I'm going to graph uh, cos x, and i got to change my view window. Look at the piece of graph paper that they gave me. How far left does it go? Negative 360. 
How far right does it go? What's the scale? Now, every 90 degrees they've labeled, or each square looks like it's 30 degrees. I'll go every 90. Do I need to change my y scale at all? Apparently not. Good, graph it, see what it looks like. Sorry? Did you get this or is it looking different? Okay, give me a second. Um, you ready? This is why sine and cos are so nice. First thing, what's the domain of this? Same as sine. How high does it go? One. How low does it go? Same as sine. Mr. Duick, it wouldn't by chance go, look up, look up, look up. Middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, would it? Only it starts in a different location is all. In fact, here's what I remember. Cosine starts up high at the top. Instead of starting at 0, 0, it starts at 0, 1 which might be the next nicest point on the planet after zero, zero. I think the next nicest point on the planet to remember might be zero, one. It starts here and it goes top, middle, bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. In other words, in other words, pick your pencils up, go like this, draw a little sketch like that. We're going to do one freehand, and then we're going to use that to fill in the actual graphing calculator. And you can make a little note that this is y equals cos x. What's the highest it gets? Let's put a little hash mark right there, 1, and a little hash mark right there, negative 1. It's going to bounce between those. Where does it start? Not at zero, zero. Where does it start? <coughs> OK. Guess how long one cosine graph is. I'll give you a hint. It's the same as sine. 360. So what you're going to do is put a little hash mark right there, call it 360 degrees. That's when we're back to where we started from. Now, we started at the top, so we at the top. Okay? Put the phone away. Leave it away. Please. Thank you. Uh, what would be halfway between uh, zero and three? How many degrees right there? Or what if we were radians? How many radians right there? I, I could easily flip to radians if I had to. Uh, pi. But I'll put 180 degrees. By the way, what about right here? 90 degrees? By the way, what about right here? halfway between 180 and 360. 270. And again, I'm going to argue, Brianna, most of you have those numbers kind of memorized already just from being around construction and sports. And out, we talk about 90 degrees and 180 degrees, and they're multiples of 90. So you kind of have those already. What was the pattern? Middle, top, middle, bottom. Oh, we're starting on the top. Middle, bottom, middle, top. The cosine wave. All of you right now, touch your left ear to your left shoulder. Hold it there. It would be wonderful if the cosine wave had some clever, easy way that I might be able to sort of remember what it kind of looks like. It would be really neat if the cosine wave kind of, sort of, looked like a letter C. Not quite, but it would sure be convenient if the cosine wave sort of looked like a C. Sort of. Okay. Kinda. It, it's not perfect, Julia. Sorry, but I've always remembered cosine, sine. Cos. C is for cos. C is also for c -c 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 can't you spell? Right. 
Or here's another way you could remember it. My math teacher in high school always said, Kos, 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 he said, rhymes with nos. And he would say, you can imagine two eyes and it's a nose hanging over a fence. Someone poking up over a fence and then no, whatever dumb way you want to remember what this looks like. Oh boy, it's going to be tough to get. There we go. Okay. But this is how, this is how I sketch cosine. You'll notice I haven't bothered filling these in. Instead, I've said, why don't I just learn how to take what I know about sine and tweak it? <coughs> so you ready? We're going to plot the grid below on here. Where does cosine start? Put a big dot, one high. Again, you think about it. These could have been yucky, ugly numbers. Nope. They are. How long is one wave? How long is once around the circle? What's the period of cosine? Those are all answers to the same question. 180 is once around the circle? So when I get to 360, I'll be back where I started from. I've gone around the circle. Now, I'll be back where I started from, up high. <coughs> then my key points are going to be uh, halfway, halfway, halfway. But for what it's worth, we're going to be at the bottom at 180, way down here, because we're in the middle here and the middle here. The only thing is, don't draw the graph like a V. It's a smooth, curvy wave. It's a smooth, curvy wave. By the way, at 450 degrees, where will I be right here? Top, middle, or bottom? Oh, let's fill it in. Where will I be right here? Top, middle, or bottom? Bottom, let's fill it in. Let's go backwards. Uh, where will I be right here? Middle? Bottom? Middle? Top? Yeah, the tongue helps. There's the cosine graph. Well, I know it's heading downwards next because top, middle is next. And I know it's heading upwards next because bottom, middle is next. <coughs> so does it matter? I, I, that little bit, I can get it right with a minimal amount of effort. So I'll say, sure. The bang for my buck, it's pretty minimal work. Hey, what's the domain of this graph? Same as sign, really? That's nice. What's the range of this graph? Sorry? Same as sine? Are you kidding me? You mean, once again, I'm going to write the lowest, I'm going to write the highest. Range says put a Y there, and I'm below 1 and above negative 1, touching and touching. Same as sine? Wow, that's nice. Next thing you're going to tell me that the Y-intercept is the same as sine. Okay, no. The Y-intercept is 0, 1, which is still pretty nice. What about the x-intercepts? Can you see there are many? Yep. Where's the first one at? 90. And then every how far? So we're going to do, if it was sine, we would say this. Every 180 degrees. Uh, because our first one is at 90, not at zero, we have to say start at 90 degrees and then go every 180 degrees, comma, where n is an integer. So, okay, I'm sorry, the, the bottom two don't quite fit McKenzie, but they're still pretty close. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I come from a big family. Not personally, I have two brothers, but both my parents come from large families. And on my mom's side, she's got like seven siblings, okay? So when we have our family gatherings, there's lots of cousins. Anybody have family? Big, okay. Maybe you can relate. As soon as you get past a certain number of cousins, 
there's always the ugly cousin that doesn't quite fit in. Okay? Mine is Cousin Marvin. When I was young, I thought he was cool because he had a leather jacket and long hair and rode a Harley. And now I know he's in and out of jail all the time. And where is he living right now? Oh, we're not sure. We think he's somewhere in BC, somewhere. And when he shows up at Christmas family, hey, great, Marvin's here. We didn't know. And okay, is he sober? Is he not? I, I don't know if you have that, but I find there seems to be when your families get a certain size, you have the ugly cousin. Tangent is the ugly cousin. Tangent does not fit in at all. Get our graphing calculators out. Oh, I like it. It's just yucky graph. If you go exit, and instead of cos x, if you go tan x and hit enter, you'll see it does not fit any kind of a pattern that we've learned so far. Okay. Now, the black calculators might have trouble. You might actually have these dark lines right here. They shouldn't be there, but the software is kind of trying to divide by zero and doesn't know what to do. Sometimes you'll get lines that shouldn't even be there. It's such a tough graph to do for a software. Okay. Ah. There's tangent. I always show it to kids, but I'm not going to be asking you to graph it like crazy. It looks like radio. No, actually, radio frequencies are sine and cosines. You haven't zoomed out far enough on your radio frequencies, I think, but I'll double check that. Okay. So, part of your homework, I already assigned one through five. Um, No, I got lots to practice. You can try number eight. We did number uh, seven already and six. Okay. What I want to practice is graphing angles, sketching angles, drawing angles by hand. And that's going to be your homework for the remainder of class. I have some sheets. Okay. The three sheets that I've given you have practice either drawing angles in standard position or going from radians to degrees, degrees to radians. And I think you folks were okay with drawing angles in degrees. And you'll practice going from radians to degrees and degrees to radians. It's times by pi over 180, or it's times by 180 over pi, depending. What we haven't practiced enough is drawing radians in standard position. So the reason I'm picking this one is on the back page, you all have half a blank page on the back. Do you not? Right there? So. I want to show you the best trick that I can give you to make drawing angles in radians a piece of cake. So you can make a little note, write this down, draw the following. In standard position. Okay. Uh, and what if I said, please draw uh, Five pi by three. Okay. Here is the best trick I can give you because this allows you to deal with fractions in the easiest way possible, only having to memorize two things and the rest you can derive. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our graph. Okay. Don't write this next bit down, but in radians, how far from there to there? This is the part you have to memorize. How far from there to there? So all of you right now, put a pi there, please. Except, what's the denominator they gave me in my fraction? So here's what we're going to do. Instead of writing 1 pi, we're going to write 3 pi by 3. If they had given me a denominator of 7, Rachel, I would write 7 pi by 7. If they had given me a denominator of 17, I would write 17 pi by 17. 
That's the trick. Why? How far from here to here? 3 pi by 3. How about to here? Now, I know it's 2 pi, but can you tell me what it is in thirds? 6 pi by 3. Don't write this down. How far is that in thirds? How many pi by threes? So I'm going to argue there's one pi by three, there's two pi by three. I divided the top into thirds. There's three pi by three right there, four pi by three. Isn't that five pi by three right about there? There, I've just drawn five pi by three. We're going to practice that a few more times. Mark, it's a great trick. It's a great trick. What if they said, please draw negative 6 pi by 5? OK. I always start out by doing a sketch. Dunk, dunk. Negative means I'm going to go that way. I always draw the little arrow just so I don't accidentally forget, because I've done that before. Halfway around is how far? Pi, negative pi. What's my denominator? You know what? I'm going to call it negative 5 pi by 5. That's still negative pi. How many pi by 5s do they want me to draw? 6. You know what? 1 pi by 5 further than 5 pi by 5. I can already kind of see where we are. In my mind, I'm dividing this into 1, 2, 3, 4, kind of 5. Uh, did I, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oops, sorry. Too many. If I want to divide it into 5s, I want 4 lines. 1, 2, 3. I'm kind of dividing it into 5 chunks, and I'm going to argue that one pi by five further, it looks like each chunk is about that, uh, right about, I, I think, I think we're there. Certainly, I, I got the right quadrant, Brianna. Maybe I didn't go quite far enough, but I, is it, sorry for you guys, it's over here. Maybe I didn't go quite far enough, but it's in that quadrant. Ten pi by six. Okay. What's my denominator? I'm going to call this six pi by six. By the way, what would all the way around be? Two of those. What would two six pi by sixes be? Twelve. What angle did they give me, Mackenzie? I think I'm going to be close to the 12. Now, I can even be more specific. If you have an even denominator, you can really break this up nicely. How far from here to here? How many pi by sixes? How far? How many? How far from here to here, then? What's halfway to six? Oh, so you're saying I could also label this three pi by sixes? What can I label that bottom one? Mm -hmm. uh, what? You're right. Because it looks like every chunk is a 3. 9 pi by 6s. Uh, Mackenzie, what am I trying to draw? You know what? Right there, just past 9 pi by 6. Got to be. There's 10 pi by 6. Anytime they give me in radians, because it's almost always going to be fractions, I just, instead of writing pi and 2 pi, I convert it to whatever denominator they give me, and I can figure it out. Let's do a couple more. Hey, let's sketch. Uh, how about 11 pi by 4? OK. Four pi by four. What about twice around? Eight pi by four? What would the top be labeled? Two pi by fours? 
When it's even, I can label all four of them because it's really nice. Uh, what about the bottom? Okay. Darian, what do they want me to drive? Draw? Ready, 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 ready? Look up, look up, look up. How far? How much further to 11? If this is 8, how much further, how, how many exactly, how much further to 11 in terms of pi by 4s? Three of them. There's two. What, Darian? Exactly halfway. It's got to be. There's 11 pi by 4. Okay. That one I can be very specific. That one, if I was marking it, I'd be fussy if you were closer to one line or the other. And you saw it because we divided it to pi by fours. The trick I want to show you when you are sketching graphs in radians, do not try and do the arithmetic. Instead, change the graph to match your fraction. Don't change your fraction to match the graph. It's way easier. Does that make sense, Bree? That's the trick I wanted to show you. So your homework, very quickly, the first sheet that I gave you is called Drawing Angles. I want to give you a half an hour. I got 45 seconds, and then I give you a half an hour, which basically works out to about 10 minutes a sheet, which is about what I figured it'll take. So in degrees, it's easier because it's 90, 180, 270, right? So hey, let's do number one together right now. Negative 10 degrees. Negative? Yep. I think right about there, right? And I did attach the answers to this one, I believe, so you can check. Then uh, that's for numbers 1 through, oh, when you get to number 11, they start going radians. Your hint is it's negative that way. What's the denominator? This is going to be negative 3 pi by 3s. I can already tell you that negative 2 pi by 3s is not going to be halfway around. It's going to be less than halfway around. That takes you all the way up to number, oh, this whole page is just drawing angles in standard position. Check your answers. Then if you look at the second sheet that I gave you, Chelsea, this one is called angles and angle measure. I stole these from the internet in case you're wondering. Here is some conversion. Convert degrees into radians and convert radians into degrees. We're not going into degrees, minutes, and seconds, so you can skip 7, 8, 9, and 10. Then number 11, going backwards, from the first sheet. Instead of saying, here's the angle, draw it. Now I'm saying, here's the drawing, what's the angle? Uh, your hint is, if it's in radians, what's the denominator of this fraction? Six? I would call right here, six pi by six. We're one less than six pi by six. I think it's five pi by six. You can figure it out from there. So that's number 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The numbers, then we're drawing for the remainder. And then, you know what? Instead of drawing, just tell me what quadrant we'd be in. Remember, your quadrants are uh, 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. And I attach the answers. And then the third sheet that I gave you, the one that we wrote our little handy dandy schmandy notes on. So draw this in standard position. Skip 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I haven't talked about coterminal angles, although they're cool. And then convert from radians to degrees, and then tell me what quadrant we're in, and then the answers are attached. So you got three sheets. If you finish them in class, make sure your name is on them. You can hand them in. You also got a couple of questions from the textbook. The class, it is yours.